here is the last way we're going to use um, the normal model or the normal tables to solve some probability questions. So it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected U.S. woman would have a pulse rate between 55 and 70 beats per minute? So let's go ahead and draw this first. So 55, again, the mean and standard deviation are here, and the tick marks are already labeled. So 55, let's say, would be about right here. This is just a sketch, no reason to measure. And 70, let's say, would be about right here. So just kind of get them in the model, approximately where they might, might belong. And so what we're looking for is, you know, the area, I'll draw it just temporarily, the area between these two vertical lines. That's our aim. We want to find that. So there's some work that has to be done because we need to get from beats per minute as we mentioned in earlier examples, to a z-score, which will allow us to look up these probabilities in the standard normal table. So we have two z-scores we have to compute here. The z for 55 beats per minute. I'm going to subtract off the mean and the standard deviation. And if you do that arithmetic, you'll find that that z-score is minus 1.681 with many more decimal values. But if we round to 2, that's negative 1.68. We'll look that one up in a minute. That's our first z. It corresponds to the 55. So that's a z of negative 1.68. So this is our z here. Um, and then we have to do the other z. So we have twice as much work for the 70 beats per minute. It's just part of how the Z table works. You have to query these individually. And that one is, if we take 70 minus 0 0.353, Again, looking at that third decimal to round, 0.35. So we have two z-scores to look up. We'll do that in just a minute. But that means that this z-score corresponds to negative uh, 0.35. It corresponds to that 70. So you can see that I'm turning it from beats per minute into these z's so that I can use sort of a generic tool to help me out with these areas that will be generated to the left of what we ask the z-table. So let's go to the z-table and take a look. All right, now notice these were both negative, and, or even if just one was negative, I've got to visit the negative um, uh, z-score page of the table. And again, it was z So our z-score was equal to minus 1.68, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes. And so it breaks it into two pieces as it has, slices it right there between uh, the tenths and hundred place. This will tell us our proper column. And this to the left of that is going to direct us to the proper row. So I may have to scroll down quite a bit. If you see, it's negative 3.4. It's getting smaller. Here we are. So we're going to be in this row. Scroll up a little bit. Maybe even zoom back a little bit to get to the one negative 1.68. So I need to be in the column 0.08. So I'm going to try to Try to get down here and cross-reference this. They seem to meet up at this number, negative 1.68. So that is 0 0.0465. So if we, re we look up negative 1.68 as our input, our output, that is here from the table, 0 0.0465. Now, when I go to put this in, I have to think about this. That is this area right here. 
I'm just kind of using this. So you'll see in a second while I'm shading it this way. And this is 0 0.0465. Five. And it, it sort of makes sense. It's, again, a kind of a small shaded region, so I don't expect that to be a large number. It's a 0, 0.0 something, so that, that makes sense that I've looked up the right value there. Now let's go look up negative 0.35. That's the z-score. This corresponds to 70. I guess we can do this. I'll do this one maybe in, in um, maybe an orange color. I think that's different enough so we can kind of keep up. So that z was equal to negative 0 0.35. Keep in mind, we're going to split this guy as well. Right there. Put the rows and columns. So negative 0.3. Go down. It's right here. I wanted that to be orange. That row, kind of, and then I've got to scroll up here and find the row for five. I'm going to kind of bring this down a little bit so I can, as I scroll down, I can find it. So just these are just to keep my eyes honest as I try to look peer into a table that has a lot going on with it. And here we have it here. And that value is 0.3632. Again, acknowledging at this point, these are all areas to the left. So that would be this area. Let me maybe use a brown here. That's a good one. So again, this is going to be the area from this vertical line all the way to the left, as far as we can imagine. So you can see that there is an overlap and there's parts where it's just brown. Now, remember, the region we want is the region between 55 and 70. Let me label what the brown is real quick. That's how quickly I forget if I don't write it down. 3632. So that's the exclusively brown region, um, you know, all brown, including that. And so it's all, it's the brown region, I should say, all the way to the left. So we, we have to work with these mathematically to figure out what is the area bet exactly between 55 and 70. And there's a way to work with these numbers. I don't know if you're thinking of it now. I'll give you a second or two to think about how could you determine what's between the two? Well, we're going to subtract the two values. If you take the two probabilities that are given to you from the table, you'll take the larger probability of 0.3632. If you subtract off the smaller number, you can determine what that probability is. I'm just going to pull out my calculator myself. And the difference of these two is 0 0.3167. So that is the area between. Now I'm going to come back through with this rainbow marker. Again, we took the, all the brown, subtracted off all the blue, and it allowed us to capture this area between the two numbers of interest, the 55 beats and the 70 beats per minute. So that's what this represents here. So if we come back and put that into a meaningful sentence, it says, again, I guess I need to um, turn this into a percentage to talk about it easily. So from the probability written as a true number between 0 and 1, 
turn it into this number that's easier to write with. There is a 31.67% chance that a woman, if you randomly selected her, would have a pulse rate between 55 and 70 beats per minute.